guys, my name is Sophie the Shadow Hunter, and today I'm doing my book review on Defying Hitler by Sebastian Hafner. Um, this is a great book. I gave this five out of five stars. I was hoping to have read it in three days. I think I ended up taking four to five days to read. The point being is I worked two devil shifts last week, and I worked late nights, and I worked early mornings, and ended up working two full days, and so I just was not able to read this in a timely manner, I wanted to read it. it still, I loved it, it was a great book. It, it was about, um, what was interesting at the end of the book and the afterward, this was his father's story and the son published it later on. Um, it was written in 1939, it wasn't published until 2000. And so, when the son was old enough, he, um, he knew his father was writing a book. He didn't finish it at the time because he was worried about, um, about the Germans finding out what he was writing about and, you know, it putting him in danger and the people he loved in danger. And so he didn't publish it, although he did put things and he wrote articles in newspapers and for magazines and such. So the, um, when the son published the book, he put it under his father's name, Sebastian Hafner, which was, which was just his writing name because he, um, he didn't want to use his Jewish name. And this is just a great book about, it starts, in um, 1933, when Hitler becomes Chancellor of Germany in the down spiral of things through the concentration camps, the uh, people being taken from their homes, um, you know, all the rules and regulations, um, them stopping people running, um, people, Jews who ran businesses like stores and grocery stores and doctors and all of that. So it was just a great, interesting book. I loved the, his writing, his father's writing style. It was just, it was so enjoying and deep and intricate, and I just loved it. So you guys should check this out. Um, let me read you what it says in the back. <clears throat> Sebastian Hafner's memoir, The Rise of Nazism <coughs> in Germany, offers a unique portrait of the lives of ordinary German citizens between the wars, covering 1907 to 1933. This doing compelling eyewitnesses accounts by a portrait of a country in constant flux. From the persuasive influence of the free corps, the persecutor of the Nazi stormtroopers and the Hitler youth movement that swept the nation to its own family's financial struggles during the uh, apocalyptic year of 1923, when inflation crippled the country and contributed to Hitler's rise to power. This fascinating personal history elucidates how the average German grappled with the rapidly changing society while chronicling day-to-day -day changes in attitudes, beliefs, politics, and prejudices. So, in this, in his father, when he was growing up during this time, it showed him being grappled with people wanting him to join the Hitler Youth or this, and not doing it, and speaking out against his beliefs, you know, without being caught. This is just a great story. I was expecting it to be a little bit more about the camps and things like that, but it wasn't, but it was just interesting because I had a, I read a book like this yet, and I really enjoyed it. It was great. It was well written. Something that was really interesting is that when his father, when he found the first manuscript of it, it wasn't complete. It was missing two chapters. And in the end, before he published the book, he found the following two chapters, so the book was completed because when his father first finished the manuscript, it was like 200 and like 57 pages. And telling the other manuscripts, so it ended up being like 300 pages. So this is a great book, a great story about surviving in that time, growing up in that time, just what people went through and it being constant flux. It was just a great story. It was interesting. Um, there's a, his father fell in love with someone. It just, it was a great story about um, World War II, about growing up in that times, you know, and not knowing what's gonna happen on a day-to-day -day basis here in America. It's not as bad as it was back then, obviously, in the 1930s and 1940s during World War II. But, you know, anything could happen. Another terrorist could happen, you know. With um, another terrorist attack could happen, you know. There could be some, you know, people, you know, last year and the year before that, shootings were big. People just walking to movie theaters and kill people or churches or anything. And it's just, it's great to read another book about the t times like that. When people realize that how life fleeting is, and you have to, you know, you, you can't be scared, and um, you have to, are you in time trials? You have to decide: Are you willing to speak up for what you believe 
and realize and, and I'm willing to die for it or be persecuted for it, or you're just going to keep your mouth shut and pretend to be okay with it. Well, I hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you guys next time with another video. Bye.